It's the 12th of May, 1927, and nearing 4 o'clock p.m. in San Diego, California, as the engine of Orion Airlines built monoplane roars to life. It's a custom model, and in the pilot seat is Charles Lindbergh. With limited visibility, he's careful with the plane as he urges it down the runway, eventually lifting off and heading east for Missouri. Lindbergh is due to land at St. Louis at 10 o'clock the following day, where the plane will be given its official name, the Spirit of St. Louis. After a brief stop, he takes off again for the second leg of his transcontinental flight. He's headed for New York. Charles Lindbergh was born on the 4th of February, 1902. He grew up on a farm in central Minnesota and had a passion for aviation and the environment. In 1919, Raymond Autry, a Frenchman who owned a hotel in New York, offered $25,000 for the first person to fly non-stop across the Atlantic Ocean. Lindbergh decided to attempt the challenge. Aviation advanced rapidly since the Wright brothers, and several others were also beginning to think the challenge possible. In June of the same year, two British aviators flew non-stop from Newfoundland to Ireland. What Lindbergh was planning to do, however, was a much more daring feat. He would fly from New York to Paris, covering more than twice the distance. The St. Louis Chamber of Commerce decided to sponsor the flight, granting him a budget of $15,000. Ryan Airlines built him a custom plane with additional fuel tanks and long wingspan, but no forward visibility. Lindbergh had to use a periscope to see what was ahead of him. He would also be alone. Flying a total of about 21 and a half hours, he completed the flight in record time, touching down at 1.30. Bad weather delayed him for a few days, and on the 20th of May at 7.50 in the morning, he climbs into the Spirit of St. Louis. The single Wright RD970 whirlwind engine roars to life, and he takes off from the dirt runway, headed to make history. Taking off from Roosevelt Field, New York, and barely clearing a few telephone wires, he flew northeast along the coast. Beginning to get tired, he lowers the plane to only 10 feet above the water to keep his mind clear. The sky is beginning to darken as the spirit of St. Louis banks away from the coast of Newfoundland, heading for the Atlantic. He was beginning to get very tired, but knew that if he fell asleep he would lose his life. To keep awake, he even tries closing one eye while opening the other, in order to rest one eye while the other focuses on the instruments. Flying through the rain and asleep at night, he flies in at a steady altitude of 500 feet above the waves. It's a struggle, and eventually, after hours, he reaches the halfway mark. He's starting to hallucinate now, seeing ghosts glide around him as he flies through a blanket of fog. After a full 24 hours in the air, Lindbergh finally sees something besides the rolling and tossing of the waves. Glancing through the side windows of his cockpit, he sees fishing boats. At 3 p.m. local time, he sees the coast of Ireland through his periscope. He was only three miles off course and two hours ahead of his schedule.
He flies over England, over the Channel, and eventually, after a long, long flight, sees the runway. It's 8 p.m. in France, as a sleep-deprived Charles Lindbergh touches down at Le Bourget Aerodrome, making a perfect landing. French crowds flocked to the plane, desperate to get a peep at the hero who had crossed the Atlantic. But a thankful Lindbergh was already being driven to a hotel by two Frenchmen. He had not slept in 55 hours. The President of the US sent a warship to pick Lindbergh up, and his famous plane, the Spirit of St. Louis, was brought home. He had done it. He had been the first to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean from New York to Paris. <laughs> 